I'd like to take you on a tour of a beautiful Victorian home in Oakley, Idaho. This home was built in 1897 and completed in 1903. Mr. Garth Greenwell, along with his lovely wife, Cindy. Garth, tell us a little bit about the construction of this home way back when they started in 1897. Most of the Victorian homes that was built back then, the bricks come right from Oakley. This particular house is the only home that I know of in Oakley that the bricks did not come from Oakley. They, uh, the wife found some bricks down in southern Utah, so they used the wagons and brought all the bricks up. You know, one thing I'd like to point out too is that uh, out in the yard on a hot summer afternoon, some of the shade that's provided for the home and also for your uh, comfort is uh, from some trees that have been there for well over 100 years. Let's take a look at some of the entranceways, and I'm absolutely impressed with the architecture from over a hundred years ago. Garth, uh, these folks really knew what they were doing. Well, they was professionals, Zeb, and keep in mind, too, back then they didn't have a lot of electricity, they didn't have any power tools, so most of the stuff that was done in this house, all the gingerbread work on all the gable ends was all handmade. Everything was handmade. Let's talk a little bit about the outside of this home with the quality and the aesthetic value of like the waterfall and other things that you've done and enhanced since you've owned the home. Yeah, Zeb, that was a project uh, I thought up in my head for, for many months, many probably years. And uh, so as I'd come down at night, a lot of times I'd, uh, I'd always throw in some extra stone and back my pickup truck. and. Uh, my wife kept asking me, what are you going to do with all that stone? I said, I think I'll make me a water feature. We added on to the house about 15 years ago, and we had to do it uh, really good to, to make it match the old brick and the, and the roof lines and everything. In the peak of the roof, on every gable end, there's some real fancy woodwork, you might say, but uh, a lot of people call it gingerbread work because it, was, it has spindles and all kinds of designs in this wood to uh, put up in that gable end. All of the shingles on the gable ends of the house, there's four kinds of, four different designs of shingles. There's the, the diamond, there's a fish scale, there's the Old English, and then there's a regular uh, shingle there wood shingle, and it's they're all cedar shingles. Garth, let's talk a little bit about your garage. I hate to call it a garage, because a garage sounds like it's full of cardboard boxes and a bunch of unused uh, and unwanted items. This is better than most people's houses. Well, the garage, uh, we wasn't going to have a garage. We hadn't planned on it, just like a lot of the things in the house we hadn't planned on. But uh, I told my wife, I said, you know, we need a garage. We've never owned a garage. I told her, I says, if we do a garage, it's going to have to be, match the house like it was there, even though it wasn't. Mm -hmm. You can park cars in it, but give us the other concepts that you've enveloped into this garage. When we were building the garage, again, I didn't plan on it, but I knew I wanted to put some before we, before we started up with the actual garage, I wanted to put some water in there going upstairs. As time would have it, I over a period of time, I, I just decided in the winter time when we couldn't work in the quarries, I started working in the garage, and uh, we just added and added and added. Now we got a pretty nice apartment up there. It is all fully self-contained, with a bathroom, kitchen, uh, big room, a uh, great room with uh, entertainment center and a uh, place that we can have family get-togethers and. Uh, and the kids can invite their friends over and stuff and play some pool and uh, we, that was something that we didn't figure on. This is what I've been waiting for now, Garth, is to actually take a tour of the inside of this beautiful, beautiful home. And I think uh, for those that are watching and listening, we're in the great room or the family room right now. Give us a little of explanation, if you will, as to how this is laid out and the construction of this room. We decided to build on a, a a family room or a great room. We, we wanted to build it out back here and add on and do it the right way so that you couldn't tell where the house, the old house stopped and the new mm -hmm. house started. So mm -hmm. this is the room that we're looking at now. And uh, there again, I just had an imagination of what I wanted done in there 
and I wanted some rock in there, of course, and uh, I got a lot of rock. Let's talk about the floor, too, because, I mean, you did amazing rock work with the floor. Uh, I was scared to step on it. It's so beautiful. Well, the stone, that, of course, is the flagstone that comes out of the quarries and stuff. Actually, I put the stone in in the wintertime. I had a, if you can imagine this, but there was a big pile of sand in there that I wheelbarrowed in and then uh, mixed all my mortar and everything inside the house and uh, to put the floor in. Let's talk about the kitchen area with the wood. I mean, fantastic choices of different woods to add to the aesthetic value of that kitchen. There again, it blended in with the, uh, because the, the kitchen is right off of the great room, so it blended really good with uh, the stone and the, and the rock wall and stuff. And, it, and that's just some remnants of uh, hardwood. I think there's nine different kinds of hardwoods in the floor. I, I bought the hardwood from a, a lady up in Hamilton, Montana, who just would collect remnants of pieces and uh, and then bundle them up, and that's where I got the stone, or I mean the wood. What about the countertops, Garth? Uh, the countertops uh, was for Micah to start with. Um, contacted the fellow, and he come down, and uh, I helped him put the countertops in. But, uh, Tell us where we are now, Garth. Okay, where we're at right now is um, going into one of the rooms that we've kind of kept uh, up old-time uh, style. You know, it's a... Uh, all the ceilings here are 10 foot ceilings and they all still have their, uh, the, um, their windows, the transom windows above the doors and above the, the entryways and stuff. But uh, back then they would have a wood stove in practically every room or every other room and they would open the transom window on the top to let the heat go into the next room and that's how they heated the house. This right now, what you're looking at is, is uh, the only bathroom that was in the place and so it's the original bathroom it's the original bathroom i added the stone on the floor and up the uh, wall of ways uh, that's the original bathtub in that house the water closet is a friend of mine from california that's that's an original water closet it does work to pull the chain to flush the toilet you know the reward zeb is uh is how you feel about it and uh and if you like it or not, and, and if you enjoy doing it. And I, you know, I will say, you know, it tests a marriage though. It will test a marriage. Uh, my wife, when I bought, bought the house, being the interior walls was all three bricks thick, I would, uh, we was living in another house at the time, so uh, I would go over and I would mark out, I was, thought I was doing her a favor, I'd mark out the places that she needed to chisel out for the wires and stuff because it didn't have any wiring in it. And uh, uh, let's just put it this way, we, we survived. Let's go upstairs and uh, take a tour of the upstairs of this beautiful Victorian home and uh, tell us a little bit about the bedrooms and the space available up in the upper room. Okay, the, the bedrooms, there's two bedrooms upstairs. Uh, one of them, were, our two sons lived in, this one right here. This is where they, that was their bedroom. Um, when we bought the house, there was no closets at all. They just had some uh, uh, cardboard, um, what they used to call them. Uh, uh, anyway, they, now this room right here is my daughter's room. This this was the old attic. Uh-huh. And uh, you see the slant on the, on the walls and stuff. And there again, you had to be really creative to make this thing work uh, but we ended up making her a, ni a nice little bedroom out of it a uh, little girls room I guess you could say and uh, so that's and everything we did up there was built in so you can't take it out this room right here uh, Zeb is um, when we built the new part on we had to go out 10 feet to make the uh, so the roof line was going to be too flat it wouldn't mm -hmm. wouldn't drain off this is my wife's most valued room. She's got a place to fold the clothes, yep. storage for everything. Yep. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. Garth and Cindy Greenwell's beautiful home in Oakley, Idaho. I'm Zeb Bell. Thanks for being on the tour with us. The warm, caring community atmosphere, the Western heritage and family, that's what this home represents.
Oakley, Idaho, a place of history, memories, and a great future. Oakley is located in Cache County, 20 miles south of Burley, Idaho. Nestled at the base of the South Hills, Oakley is the gateway to the world-famous City of Rocks. Climbers from all over the world arrive daily to test their climbing skills. The Pioneer Heritage lives on a daily basis with the famed Oregon and California trails right in the backyard of this original Brigham Young settlement. Oakley is a well-established farming and ranching community with an excellent school system K-12 through with championship athletic programs. And literally right out your back door are some of the best camping, boating, snowmobiling, skiing and fishing in the entire Northwest. As a matter of fact, the Idaho State record walleye was caught in the beautiful Oakley Reservoir. Oakley's history is alive and well with many historic Victorian homes and community events like the huge Pioneer Day celebration in July. Oakley, Idaho, a great place to live, a great place to enjoy.